Hello everyone, it's the Historical Gamer once again, and today we're returning to Gettysburg, The Tide Turns. This is really our second look at Gettysburg, The Tide Turns. When the game first came out, I had some issues with it, and uh, didn't end up really kind of playing through to see how it would all work. Uh, we are now trying to see how the game is, what the shape of it is in December of 2017, and we are fighting the Battle of Gettysburg. We are fighting, well, as the game title gives away. We are fighting from the Union perspective, and thus far, we've destroyed three Confederate brigades and badly damaged two more. But now we have several of our most important units in very rough shape. Uh, not that they've been destroyed yet, but they're having trouble falling back to the Cemetery Hill line. The Confederates have kind of advanced to the east and to the north of them, leaving their lines of retreat very difficult uh, to uh, really find. And our 11th Corps has started to pile on to Cemetery Hill, but their troops, frankly, aren't very reliable, so we'll see if we're able to actually hold the ridge line or not. With that being said, we're about to start turn 7, I believe it is, and uh, we'll go ahead and jump right back in. So let's go ahead and hit continue. You can see the first chit that gets drawn is the first core. Oh, thank God. So I can't retreat Cutler at all. I could retreat with Baxter back to Cemetery Ridge, but Baxter's kind of there to try and help get Cutler out, because Cutler is one of the two best brigades in our army, in my opinion, and I don't want to just leave him to the dogs to get surrounded or killed, so I'm actually going to leave him in place. Meanwhile, I could bring Biddle up and try and uh, do some damage, you know, bring Biddle up to support Baxter, but a lot of this depends. You know, if the Confederates get to move their forces before we actually have the ability to initiate combat, that we could be in trouble. Um, the other alternative is bringing him forward to deal with um, the artillery, to support the artillery here under Davis. Um, the Confederates don't actually have a lot of infantry in the south. All their infantry is in the north. So that's kind of intriguing. Maybe we do go on the offensive here. Let's biddle. Is he raw? He is. Move him up to support the attack on Jenkins. Move Stone up to support the attack on Davis. Or maybe we do this. Move the da Stone is experienced as well, right? Stone to assist in the attack on Perrin. Move the Iron Brigade forward as well. Eh, I don't like the odds against against Lane. It spreads the damage out a bit, but it's not not what I'd like. Um. Can I undo more than one turn? Oh, I can. Nice. What if we move stone here? And then move the Iron Brigade here. Iron Brigade will actually do more damage to Perrin this way. Huh. So this would put four damage on Perrin and one on Lane. Do it the other way. If we put the Iron Brigade here. Here. We would put three damage on Perrin. One on Lane. Stone's Brigade is only four strength, though. So even if the Iron Brigade loses two, three... Eh. But the Iron Brigade will still have a lane to retreat down, probably. Alright, so we're going to go aggressive. We've got three more units that can move, but Cutler can't get out, so we're going to leave him where he is. Go ahead and commit, and we'll see what happens next. Damn it. Heath gets to move. So Heath, I'm assuming, will pull lane out and move artillery up. That would be my assumption. Oh, really? He didn't really do that. The Confederate combat. Why is our... Wait, what? Why are you advancing, Gamble? I'm confused. Why did Gamble do that? There does appear to be a screening effect as well, for what it's worth. Ooh, looks like Lane just got destroyed. Nice. So Lane was shattered. That's the 4th Confederate Brigade that was shattered. The Iron Brigade is almost dead. Um, meanwhile, we've got a lot of fighting going on up here. There are Jenkins' Brigade. Cutler and Baxter and... Is it Biddle? Up here trying to damage the Confederate Cavalry. You can see here... They took some damage, but they also shattered the Confederate cavalry. Baxter's brigade intrinsically retreated, which is not great. But um, maybe, I guess we'll see how the Confederates decide to play this. We'll see what Rhodes' brigade does to see if they continue to cut off Cutler's brigade. But maybe we just saved Cutler a, a lane of retreat. Confederates are advancing into the town. 
So Cutler may be stuck in the same position he just was in. As you can see, a new Confederate brigade under Ramasaur has just moved up near Cutler. The Iron Brigade almost died, by the way. They did succeed in damaging Lane and destroying Lane. The Iron Brigade lost three strength in that fight. And you can see the Confederates advancing into the town, putting a couple of our brigades in rough shape. I hope I didn't get anyone cut off by that advance. Oh, great. USA combat. I would rather troops retreat if they can. Mm. One more unit can bombard? Ooh, oh, alright. Over here. Nice, we just broke one more brigade here on the southern front. And our troops retreat. Well, Cutler really can't retreat anywhere good. Baxter's gonna get shot up, though. If I could retreat Cutler to the east, I would do it. But instead, it's just going to be Biddle and Baxter withdrawing. Three more brigades cut off, or not cut off, but in pretty bad shape up here. Ooh! Shattered this other Confederate brigade. Nice! So Cutler took some damage, but two Confederate brigades are destroyed in this particular fight. So, and one was fresh. I'm not going to advance with anyone. Continue. Now the 11th Corps gets to move. So Krasinski's troops can extend the flank to Culp's Hill. Smith will move into position here. Von Glees will move to Seminary Ridge here. So uh, that's about all we need to do, I think, for the 11th Corps. I don't think there's anyone else that we need to let's see here. The rest are all in position. So we'll leave them in position, and we'll go ahead and end the 11th Corps' turn. It is now the Cavalry's turn, and Gamble can... Oh, can he finally retreat? Yes, he can make it out of there, potentially, if he actually survives to get back to the lines. But he now has a, a line of retreat. Um, our artillery is also still in position here along Culp's Hill. I don't really want to keep them there. That's kind of a weak position, but we'll have to keep them there just to keep the line contiguous for the moment. Early's brigades are coming down south. They shouldn't be in the fight this turn. Probably not in the fight even next turn, I would guess. They're still a little ways away. They could potentially reach the edge of, of combat after this next turn. Or after this turn, I suppose, maybe. The artillery could probably play a role. All depends on when things get rolled. Advancing down past Blucher's Knoll. We never even tried. The other interesting thing is this game is really challenging to get your forces for the Union into position north of the town. If you think about it. Heath is so close to your initial positions, it's really tricky. Okay, so Pender's division is coming up. Heath's division is almost outside of the artillery. I think Heath's division is basically gone. Confederate artillery is flanking. Seems like such a weird decision for artillery. Like, you're not infantry, guys. Where are you trying to go? Um, okay, so... Looks like the 12th Corps, thank goodness, is going to start arriving here. On our next turn, Confederate Artillery is continuing to advance. I don't understand what they're doing. Like, I get they're going for the objectives, but that to me seems like an AI flaw if you're using artillery to take ground. Uh, oh, oh. Well, I guess the Iron Brigade's probably going to die here. Confederate, uh, get to go first. Our artillery bombardment is probably being too effective. Stone, Cutler, and the Iron Brigade are all going to be in rough, sh rough shape. I think the Iron Brigade is going to be dead. Actually, Stone's Brigade might be dead too. Yep, there goes the Iron Brigade, shattered. Cutler retreats north, because that's smart. Stone retreats, like, these lines of retreat for some of these troops don't make a lot of sense. Um, did beat back two brigades, almost destroyed Perrin's brigade under Pender, so did some damage there. Was that Pender or was it... I thought we, that was... I don't know. Either Pender or Heath. Pretty sure it was Pender. Yeah, it was Pender, because he's moving him right back forward again. 
He's really, uh, I will say the AI is very aggressive with units that need some rest. These units, as you see their little, their square go white, that means those are no longer combat effective, but they can regain some of that. If you rest those troops, they can regain lost casualties. Uh, as long as the, the square is still there, as long as it's just white, they can regain their strength. I don't understand why you would do, why you would press troops when you're on the attack, why you would press troops so near to being destroyed forward in the way that the AI is doing. But, alas, I don't know how the computer thinks. Okay, early units are moving in. Again, looks like they're not going to be in combat. So the 12th Corps is starting to arrive. Looks like we get two brigades initially. Veteran and experienced. I don't know which is better. Is veteran better or is experienced better? I'm not really sure. But either way, they're arriving, and I will take all the experienced troops we can get. Alright, now we get to move the 11th Corps. Um, it's tempting to try and, like, overwhelm these guys. The artillery is so damn powerful, though. That's the problem. Like, these guys won't even destroy this artillery. Three infantry brigades against one artillery unit. And the artillery unit's going to destroy Von Glees, it'll and it'll damage all the rest effectively the same. Tell me how that makes sense. <sighs> Alright. I don't know how I'm supposed to hold this objective. I really don't. This, this guy's on the flank, right? Far, far. If we do this, move him over here. Pray the Confederates don't get to move first. This would effectively break this artillery unit up to having no real substantial damage that it could do, and we would likely destroy one uh, Confederate artillery unit. So I will do that because artillery is so goddamn hard. We destroy. And then we get USA Combat. Attacker gets to bombard. It's the one bombardment unit. I, I don't even know why they represent the cavalry here. Because frankly, they're not going to do anything. Um, oh, nice. So we can actually retreat some of these troops. Retreat Gamble. Retreat. We'll leave Baxter because he might destroy Perrin. Or not Baxter, but we'll leave... Um, wherever this artillery guy is. We'll retreat Baxter, and we'll actually retreat this cavalry as well, or this artillery. You can see they all retreated. The Confederates might get a chance here to take one of these objectives, but I'm confident we can counterattack it. Because if they advance, they'll be insane. Right. Just destroyed Perrin's brigade, so another Confederate brigade gone. We're not going to advance. That's now we're trying to whittle down this Confederate artillery piece without it being a Death Star, not Death Star, but without it wiping us out. So you can see the approach fire was pretty damaging. It took out one of Von Glees' units. Really hard to tell. I can't see anything. Looks like we're dealing some damage here. We didn't destroy it, but we definitely hit it pretty hard. Um, we got one more First Corps Brigade coming up. Stone is... Like, Stone and Cutler are just like, Hey, guys, we're out here on our own. Let's just move around this way, and maybe no one will notice us here, way in the rear of the Confederate Army. Um, let's see here. First course, pretty much dead. Baxter will move him into position here. Move this artillery back. And Standard's Brigade's coming up. So we'll commit them. Cavalry gets to move now. So Gamble can advance over there. He can move to the flank. So Cavalry will hold the right flank of Culp's Hill with Gamble in the woods there. And... Move this artillery back to this objective spot does open up a hole in our lines, but the 12th Corps coming down should help close that. And if the Confederates advance into that hole, they're going to be asking for trouble. 
Meanwhile, Gordon's brigade's coming forward. Likely, if we have Confederate combat, they will shatter us. Frankly, I don't trust the 11th Corps against any of these troops coming up. But... I suppose it is what it is. And this is going to be a full-blown attack. This is going to be exactly what uh, Southerners... Uh, when they think about the missed opportunities of July 1st, this is going to be a full-blown attack on our position on July 1st. Confederate combat about to occur. Oh. Artillery bombardment. Confederate guns are way too strong. Oh, well, there's one brigade gone already. Confederate brigades are too strong. Not brigades. Confederate artillery are way too strong in this game. I'm sorry, but Confederate artillery was notorious for being crappy. Another of one of our brigades gone. Uh, I'm like gritting my teeth over here as I watch them just ravage our soldiers. We did some, I feel like we did a really good job. We basically took out one and a half of Hill's entire core already, but Early's core is coming down and probably going to take these two objective points. We did drive Daniels back, but you can see Gordon and O'Neill have moved forward now and all of the troops we have here are experienced. I think we just shattered this uh, artillery piece at least, so that's good. One of their artillery batteries is gone. I think that ends the combat phase. Our cavalry gets to move. Move Gamble over here. Both cores finally coming up. Google, you're going to run right. Let's see, can Ruger get there? Yes, he can. We're going to move these two brigades immediately into combat. Try and overwhelm O'Neill and at least slow down their offensive. Race these guys into combat. Exact opposite of what Slocum historically did, the commander of the 12th Corps. Basically sat back and was like, oh, I don't want to take responsibility for anything that might happen here. I'd be the senior commander on the field. I don't want to be there. But this is assuming a more aggressive Slocum throwing his forces forward at all hazards to deal with the enemy. Confederate Artillery Reserve is taking ground. Anderson's division of the 1st Corps is arriving now. We destroyed one Confederate division and another is coming up. I'm going to see if I can get in and, and isolate these Confederate, this Confederate battery under Pegram here and retake this objective. At the moment, the Confederates hold three objectives. Our troops are coming up and ease, are very susceptible to being defeated in detail. They've already got a lodgment on Seminary Ridge and Hill. Heath appears to have one artillery battery, and that's all he's got left. Pender, meanwhile, has some infantry. You can see Thomas's brigade moving forward. That's really about it. So we've almost destroyed two Confederate brigade or divisions. Um. See, the problem is if I advance these guys over here, then they're going to have their flank exposed to this artillery, and they're just going to get shattered. As much as I'd like to give some support. Move this artillery onto the flank near Culp's Hill. Actually, no. Let's leave them where they... These guys need to be up on the ridge so then they can fire and support. Move our troops. Ostrich Brigade over here. Trying to have troops on all sides of this artillery battery to limit its effectiveness. It can only... I can't read what it's gonna do in terms of damage, but presumably we should get the better of it if we get to fight. We'll go ahead and commit there. First core. These guys gotta stay in position. Like, I'd like to pull them out to keep them safe, but I can't just cede that position to the Confederates, I don't think. Retaking it would be pretty difficult. I'll focus on just holding our ground, although we do have Standard's Brigade coming up. He'll come up here. Now Rhodes is going to move. So they're going to... Again, if the combat would come earlier in the turn, we'd be in a little bit better shape. 
But given it's coming later in the turn and now we just gave up the corner, that flank, it's it's more difficult for us to win, I guess. Um, attacker bombard. So this artillery of ours can bombard. We'll bombard Thomas or Doles. Thomas is closer to being destroyed, but Doles has a lot of focus on him. Thomas, there's basically no chance of Thomas being destroyed, so we'll go ahead and bomb him. Doesn't look like it did anything. None of our units can retreat. Which ones of those do we want to retreat? Probably Davis, no. No, well, actually I'm gonna have them all fight. We'll see, it looks like uh, Gamble's gonna be in a bit of a rough spot. Damage being done on these approach, approach fires. Oh wait, no, that's good because we're the ones attacking. Enemies. Hopefully, we can destroy Doles. That's my goal. Maybe we can destroy Thomas. There's an outside chance. Oh, we just got him. We got Thomas. Nice. And there it goes. Harbor gates. Probably there's no damage to Doles done over here. But Doles was driven off. Brzezinski's troops fought bravely and then retreated. Same for Biddle's. Biddle needed to be retreat, though, frankly. Um, advance my units. If I advance you, where do you... Ooh, nice. You advance here, which is where I would want you to advance. All right, now we're attacking the artillery here in the south. Um, this is probably dead. Alright guys, stop taking damage and hurt you. The artillery surrounded. One. Don't tell me that's all you're gonna do. That's it? Ugh. Man. Howard, your course sucks. The having the course sucks. Alright. Well, oh, I didn't. I thought I ordered McDougal forward. I thought he ordered him over there. Guess not. All right. Ooh, so Cutler got one heal back. Stone got one back as well. And now Johnson's division's arriving. Meanwhile, we're still stuck with just our limited forces. East division, again, just the artillery, really. And Confederate combat. Great. Before we get to move any of our troops as we would want them to. They're attacking the column. Advancing way. Was that a retreat or an attack? I'm not sure. I guess they was probably retreated there based on how the game works. And we just lost a Oops, brigade just took a lot of damage. We just lost one of our artillery batteries, lost another brigade under Ruger, so we're going to lose two brigades and one artillery battery. Oh, and apparently Gamble's brigade, too. Jeez. This is the turn the Union Army falls apart. The first corps is either gone or, like, ineffectual with two brigades way out to the west. Well, at least we shattered one more Confederate brigade there that retreated. Hopefully we can finish off Pegram's battery at the very least. Looks like we just... No, he's still got one health left. Oh my goodness, he won't die! Great. That's great. All right, so we get to bombard someone now, right? You bombard Hayes, and that's about all we're gonna do. And our artillery has done nothing yet. Awesome. Um, meanwhile, you're gonna attack, hopefully, standard the Confederate artillery, and they did. There you go. But then he retreated. You win the battle and retreat. Oh boy. So Cemetery Hill is like completely unoccupied. Let's see here, can we advance and threaten the rear of Gordon's brigade? 
probably do that, right? Do we even want to do that? Go threaten Duels' brigade? We've already had combat for this turn. I guess we'll try and retreat him around this side of the line to get him back into position, or back into uh, friendly territory here. No, I'm not really going to do that. I was just trying to see if there's like a fog of war thing or something. All right. Well, these troops could really use some rest. That's all we have left of the first corps. Johnson's divisions coming out of the map as well. So this is a really interesting fight. We've destroyed pretty much... Hen we've basically destroyed Pender and Heath's division. And I think we've given Rhodes' division a bit of a bloody nose. Early's div... Whoa. Early's division is still basically untouched. And um, Johnston and Anderson's division are coming out of the map also largely untouched. Uh, but that's kind of where we are with 21 turns remaining. Here's Pender. He's got one artillery unit here. He's going to move on to Cemetery Hill. Looks like we're going to be on the offensive to some degree. Early. I'm kind of curious what the Confederates will do if they take all the objective points, though. Like, I think we lose at this point. Like, the end of July 1st is clearly a Union defeat. But I kind of feel like, yes, okay, the Union has had two corps destroyed. That's a big deal. But the Confederates effectively had one corps destroyed. A third of the Confederate army is just been horribly, savagely bloodied. Um, I gotta wonder what the real outcome of this battle would be. But pretty sure in either case we're gonna lose. Lose an early battle. So we won't really get to see if we're gonna continue continue on to, to day two. I suppose we'll see if the game lets us. Anderson's division still moving up. Clearly I got completely outclassed and played by the AI. But it's pretty clear the AI goes directly for the objective and nothing else. Even maneuvers its artillery around to go for the AI, nothing else. The only reason they attacked us along McPherson's Ridge is we were blocking their approach to the objectives. But where they could, they went around us. They went north and they went south of our of our line. Uh, or actually, I guess, maybe east and west of our line on McPherson's Ridge. Uh, with no real attention paid to our troops there. Which led our troops getting into all sorts of messes and cut off and surrounded and all of that jazz. But, um, good to know, I guess, from a, from a playing tactic style. Alright, so 11th Corps' turn to move. I think you retreat. I think we have to pull off these objectives and just hope that we can launch a counterattack at some point. Maybe we bring... Is well, Koster's Brigade experience? No, they're raw too. They're just going to provide some support to standard here. Slesling Flenig. Actually, we'll move up here. Actually, well... Hmm. We'll leave him here, because we might get to move. Alright. I will sacrifice... Let's undo all of that. Who gets to move where? Let's see. We'll leave Krasneski in position. Pull our artillery back, I think. We'll move Schlesling Flanig. Deal with O'Neill frontally. And we'll move Koster on the flank here. We'll move Von Glees over here. And I think we'll pull Smith back because it doesn't look like he's doing any good there. Into this wood line back here. So maybe we destroy O'Neill. Probably not. Maybe we destroy Doles. Probably not. But we've got. That's all we're going to do here. Turn 10. We don't have cavalry to move, do we? No. So move on to the 12th Corps. 12th Corps troops coming out of the field. And they're going to try and engage Daniel's Brigade. And then maybe sweep down the Confederate flank, because I feel like this Culp's Hill line here is kind of exposed. We can do quite a bit of damage here. If we get a combat turn. But we don't. And the 11th hour has started. I think this is the final turn in, in day one. I could be wrong. Johnson's brigades are moving up. I'm curious how the end of day mechanic works as well. Like, do you get free movement in the night or something like that? 
That was one of the things that I thought uh, Civil War General 2 always did a really good job was you still had turns during the night. You couldn't fight, but you could move troops around. But if you move troops around, it really hurt their morale and it hurt their fatigue. You know, they wouldn't be ready to fight if you spent all night marching. But you could move them if you needed to. Or you could mix and match and move them a little bit and whatnot. Um, it probably gave you too good of a look of, like, Fog of War and all that kind of stuff. Um, oh, boy. So, the combat. Is it occurring? And now we're having Daniels is attacking. If I was the AI, I would have retreated with him. But hopefully we get to destroy Daniels here. Without too much damage to these 12 core brigades, which are only fresh troops that are coming up. There you go. So, no damage done. One of our brigades did retreat, but no damage done. And that Confederate brigade on our flank is destroyed. Meanwhile, what's left of our original force down here, engaging the Confederates, and likely will die. Okay, <laughs> there's one of our brigades dying. We did say I thought Von Gies would die, so I was right. Doing a little bit of damage to O'Neill and Doles. But probably suffering more than it's worth. Stannard's brigade is basically gone. Coster has been driven back. O'Neill did retreat. Dole's advanced. How is his brigade in any shape to advance? By the way, our army is basically hanging by a thread. If that wasn't clear, our 12th Corps is kind of up here on its own. What's left of the 1st and 11th are down here. This is kind of a Confederate dream, I gotta imagine. Probably wrap this episode up in a moment. We're just waiting to get through this turn. And then we'll uh, see where we're at. This is really an, a battle of Armageddon, uh, or so it feels. See Anderson's division coming up. Long lines of Confederate reinforcements. And they're just going right by Cutler and Stone's brigades, which are in the rear of the Confederate army. I guess that's my biggest complaint with kind of how this game handles things like that. It's like, all right, well, there's troops there. There's blue troops there in line just in front of Seminary Ridge. We could isolate and destroy them, but we'll advance right past them. Oh, well. Oh, no, nope. they're going to at least advance Lane's Brigade, which or Lang's Brigade, which could easily get destroyed by Cutler all by himself. So I guess that's good for us. Okay, 12th Corps coming up. So, do we want to try and destroy the rebel artillery? We just recaptured this one objective. These sharpshooters are like, what are they? What can they do against enemy artillery? Not much. But they also don't lose much. You can see they only lose one damage and they inflict one damage. It's interesting. Move this guy over here, and that's the extent of the 12th Corps troops that we have on the field. Now it's the 11th Corps' turn to move. So I guess we move Coster forward here to try and destroy Doles. Leave the artillery here, because he's actually going to do quite a bit of damage to Hayes. And... Move this guy forward. What kind of damage is he going to take? Not worth it. Um, What if Krasinski moves here? No, probably not worth it. This brigade, are they sharpshooters too? Do they... Ugh. Smith, you're going to rest. Krasinski, you'll kind of keep a hold on the Confederates over there, or on the on our line over there. Let's link Flenig. What will that do? Does absolutely nothing to the projected damage between Doles and Coster. But it does make him slightly less exposed if we pull him back to this objective point here. So I think we'll do that. We'll leave all the rest where they are. And the third corps, Sickles troops are beginning to arrive. Sickles himself, not a great general. Some of his division commanders, though, were exceptional. So there he goes. The third corps are actually going to come up along the Confederate flank, so we'll see here. While we're in the process of doing this, let's take a look here and see victory status. Confederacy, U USA victory, have more VP than CSA, currently 251 to 186, so we're winning on the victory points. Uh, but the Confederates have five objectives. Eee! 
Victory status is evaluated at the end of turn 11, which is the turn we are currently on. Great. Um, calendar, turn status. So, pending, the Confederates have three more divisions to move. We also have U.S. combat and the First Corps, which is like nothing. Um, so we're pretty much done for this turn. Yeah. Well, we're going to technically lose, but I think you can keep playing, even if you lose early. So I guess we'll see how this all works out here in a few moments, but we're going to go ahead and end this turn. And Heath's division gets to move. What's left of it, which is one artillery battery. Pender's division gets to move, which is that battery of artillery. <laughs> is that it? And now the first corps gets to move. Um... Jones Brigade, does it make sense to maybe hit... We can't hit O'Neill on the flank, damn. I mean, we can hit him with stone. It'll be a one-to-one -one fight. Uh, Stannard is probably going to die. Oh, the Confederates withdrew their artillery over here. Nice. So if we move over here, does that do anything for us? Does it cause him to get more damage against him? Not really. There's no reason not to move standard. Okay, we'll link our lines up. So, well, actually, we just created a gap. But in either case, not going to move Biddle, I don't think. Unless we can move him forward. Maybe he'll do some damage. Maybe Doles will get overwhelmed. Confederates don't get to attack again. But they may get to move before we get to have our, our combat. Right, so artillery over here gets to bombard. I don't get to bombard anyone who's in combat, so I guess I'll just hit a Iverson. He's the weakest. And again, no damage. Yay! Uh, attacking units eligible for retreat. Never retreat, never surrender. And St oh, Stone's Brigade is shattered. His flank attack on O'Neill was unsuccessful. Artillery here was shattered as well. Did very little damage against Hayes' Brigade. He still took a little bit of damage. How's Lang's brigade doing? Okay, so we destroyed one Confederate and very weak Confederate brigade under Lang. Marching forward with one of these new divisions coming up. We'll go ahead and commit. And any chance we get to destroy stuff? There we go. Dole's division or brigade is shattered. Granite Coster's almost dead too. But hey, we shattered two Confederate brigades. We had one of ours shattered. Now roads will move up. But no more combat this remaining turn, anyway. So we're going to lose. We already know that. At least based on the standard victory conditions. All right, everybody. I think that's going to do it for this video. What I will say is I had intended to play this game through the entire battle. It gives you an option to continue. We lost at the end of day one. It evaluates every battle at the end of the day to figure out if you've lost based on the victory conditions. Based on this, we've clearly lost the battle. Most of uh, Yule's core is intact. Hill's core has been shattered, but they've destroyed two... Almost two and a half Union cores by this point. So I think the game's deciding they've got the position, they've bloodied the Union army, they've destroyed a th third of the Union army, you lose the game. It gives you the option to play through, but I thought I was able to save it while I was waiting on the screen. I hit save multiple times. I even went through to the next screen and hit save multiple times, and it never let me save it. So unfortunately, because of that, I'm not able to continue. Uh, with this particular Let's Play since I've since closed the game. But I hope you guys enjoyed the series. Let me know your thoughts below. I know this was only a two-part series, but if you want to see more Gettysburg The Tide Turns, please let me know. Uh, certainly can be done. Um, it appears to allow you to play through in a way that it didn't used to allow you to play through, so that issue, that bug, seems to be fixed, as I never have even gotten this far before. Um, so it seems like the game is in better shape. It's a little bit more solid than it was before. Um, but still some sort of t quirky UI things such as this whole, the way the game save uh, works. D I, I, and I don't remember ever seeing a confirm if it, if it saves it, but, but anyway, guys, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed these videos. Let me know your thoughts below, and I'll leave you with a very short video clip from uh, Gettysburg at the Angle at sunset. Until next time, guys, this is the Historical Gamer saying thank you for watching, and I'm out.